Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at propellers. Um, this is a video that I almost didn't make really because as far as using propellers is concerned there's not really anything to it. You just put it on the motor and tighten the nut and that's it. Uh, and also as far as which one should you use, that also tends to be a matter of personal preference. So I would recommend getting a few different types of propellers and trying them out and just seeing which one you like. But since this is a newbies video series, and I keep saying I don't want to leave anybody behind, um, it might actually be a good idea to just take a look at some of the labeling and different types of props that there are and explain a little bit about it. The characteristics of a propeller come down to pretty much four basic things. They are the length of the propeller, the pitch or the angle of the blades, number of the blades, and also to some degree what material the propeller is made of. So if we start from over here, let's look at this one. This is obviously a small one, and <laughs> small comparatively to those ones. And we'll have a look at this label on here. I'll see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So this one is a 4x4.5 propeller, and the first number, the 4, refers to the diameter of the propeller. So from one end to the other, it's going to be 4 inches long. And the second number, the 4.5, that refers to the pitch of the blades, which is the steepness. And <clears throat> some of these are going to be a little bit hard to focus on, I think, but you can see that the blades have a, a slope going up like that. And the steeper that slope is, the higher the pitch number will be. And what the 4.5 refers to is that if you were to take this, so if you put it flat down on the desk, and then you turned it round one full revolution and you lifted it up at the rate of that slope, so if you can imagine, there's like a imaginary spiral staircase going up here. Uh, the height of that spiral staircase by the time you got one full revolution round would be, for this propeller, 4.5 inches. So it's a little bit of a funny way to do it, perhaps, but um, that's what that means. And there was also another piece of the label there, R. Well, it's not going to focus now, but we saw it before. Uh, and the R refers to the fact that this blade or the blades here are sloped in the reverse orientation so if we'll just look at this one we can see that the orange one yeah this is tricky to focus on it isn't it the orange one has the high edge on the left side and the black one has the high edge on the right side uh, so let's have a look at this one and we'll try and find those numbers this should be a little bit easier to get the camera to focus on I think here we go. So this is a 4x4.5 bullnose, and the numbering can be a little bit different, but um, it's, it means the same thing. So the first two numbers, you could imagine that that is 4.0 inches diameter, and then the 45 is 4.5 inches in pitch, the spiral staircase thing. And then bullnose refers to the fact that this prop has been made a lot wider so that at the end of it, it has to sort of cut off very squarely like that as opposed to this one which is uh, pointed and the purpose of that is just to give it more area overall and so that in the same four inch space we can push more air down uh, so why why would you want to do that instead of just making the propeller bigger because making the propeller longer will also give you more area so as we can see the next one here is a five inch propeller and let's just have a look at the labeling on this one let's see what this says oh, I don't know not that one so this is a five inch uh, diameter and a three inch pitch so if we spin this round and round and lift it up at the rate of uh, the pitch it's only going to go up three inches it's not very much and if we have a look at the blades here we'll see that it is a fair bit shallower but of course this is quite hard to quite hard to look at here but uh, you'll just have to trust me it's a it's a shallower pitch and if we look at this one we'll see that the pitch is huge on that one this is a bit easier to see thank goodness look how steeply sloped that one is and this is a six inch diameter and what is the pitch on this one exactly so this is a six by five point five inch pitch very very steep now just going back to this bullnose one for a minute so why might we want to use a bullnose one instead of just making it longer? Well, suppose that I have a quadcopter like this, and this is a 5-inch propeller, 
and it's already coming very close to there so I can't actually use a six inch propeller on here because it's gonna it's gonna hit on the corner of the quadcopter so that's why this particular quadcopter is referred to as a five inch quad because five inch propeller is the largest it's going to take without hitting on something there and another reason to use a bullnose propeller perhaps is that uh, as you make a propeller longer it becomes more flexible or it's easier to flex like this and also a little bit easier to break whereas if you put all the material closer to the middle and um, make it a bit thicker it's less easy to break uh, so that can also help when you crash so here I have another couple of examples of 5 inch versions of these so this is just the regular shape prop and the bullnose and these are both 4.5 inch pitch so they're same slope and they're of course also um, 5 inch same diameter and then over here we have the 6 inch version of those so basically the same thing just scaled up a little bit um, so any um, any of these quads from about here to the left, well, with ex exception of the little ones there, the 4-inch ones, anything in the 5-inch to 6-inch range is probably going to be what you're looking for to fly the kind of mini quad that I've built in this video series. But of course keep in mind that depending on what kind of frame you have, the 6-inch ones may be too long because they might hit onto something. So I would start probably 5 inches a is a pretty good way to start if you're going to be buying a few different types of propellers to see what you like and in the middle we have some other variations of five inch props these are multi-bladed or more than two blades and let's just have a look at this one so this is five by four by three so the first number again is the diameter it's five inch and this is a four inch pitch so it's slightly less steep than those other ones and then the last number is how many blades there are. So this is a three blade prop. Um, and this is one that I use quite regularly on my mini quad. And you can also get these ones which are, um, I'll just have a look at it there, 50, 40. Doesn't actually say how many blades there are, but uh, obviously there's four. And then if you want to get really crazy, you can try this, which, um, yeah, this is 50, 40 as well, but six blades. Uh, and as far as like how many blades are the best to use, this is what the point where I would say just try them out and, and see what you like. But as a general rule, two blade props will be good for fast flight, fast forward flight, maybe racing and so on. And the more blades you have, the quicker turns you can do in general, like quicker stop, stopping and turning around and going back the way you came and stuff like that. Um, but you'll probably find that the sweet spot is either two or three blades, depending on what you're doing. So I bought these just to sort of play around with, and I've basically never used them since. I've always been either using two or three blades, most most commonly three blades these days. In fact, this quad that we just looked at over here is what I, uh, these props are what I'm typically using at the moment most often. And these are a little bit heavier than these ones, but I kind of like the heaviness. As long as you have a motor that is powerful enough to spin them, has enough torque to spin them properly, um, they are nice because, as I mentioned before, they don't break so much, being a little bit more bullnose and chunky around the middle. And they are also heavier, which is not necessarily a bad thing because if you remember from, I think, one of the very first videos in this series, I showed you the way that the motor spinning was what gave the yaw control to turn the quadcopter in the uh, yaw direction. And the heavier the propeller and motor are together, the better your control the quad will have over itself. So I find that um, this is sort of a sweet spot for me, this sort of slightly little bit heavy propeller like this one. Um, and also these are made from a material that is quite tough as well. So if we turn our attention to materials now, we'll see, oh, you can't really see in the video, but these these props here are made of a... Uh, pretty pretty weak plastic this one in particular is very bendy and usually after a simple crash you'll find that if it doesn't break outright you'll see some white marks starting to form around the middle there and that usually means that the prop is on its way out so back in the day before we had these other materials it used to be like one crash would be at least one prop that you'd have to change but now quite often with this newer polycarbonate style material you can often tell this one by it 
look looks a bit more shiny. So if we compare the surface of that there, it's a little bit more matte on the blue, blue one. I don't know if that's the best way to tell, but all the ones I've seen so far seem to be this polycarbonate material is quite shiny. Um, and it's quite nice in that when it bends, if you have a nasty crash, um, it'll bend up like that, but it's very hard to break. And even if it gets to some point like that, you can quite often bend it back and just keep flying. And you don't even have to bother changing props at all. So you could go from back in the day, one crash per uh, one prop replacing per crash to about oh, I don't know. I've, I think I've flown for a month or so on a set of these props without having to change them. So it's uh, a lot more convenient. Now speaking of materials, I have a couple of other props over here which are obviously not mini quad props, but I just thought I'd look at these before I finish because they are all different materials. This is a 10 inch prop and let's see if we can focus on here and see what this is. There we go, that is a 10 inch 4.5 inch pitch propeller. And this one's made of plastic and if we look at what happens when we bend this one, uh, we'll see it's quite soft. And I discovered fairly soon after starting using these that they have a limited lifetime and the problem is that typically the quadcopter that you're flying with this is quite heavy and has a lot of weight to support so yeah that's another thing to keep in mind all of the weight of your quad is going to be supported on on this blade like that so if your quad weighs say uh, so let's say it weighs 600 grams that's 150 grams per motor so you're going to have 150 grams spread across this and it's going to be bending it up like that uh, and in the case of these ones my quad was quite heavy and just sort of broke quite easily so I stopped using those pretty quick but the softer propeller does give you a little bit softer softer ride I guess you could say it um, stops um, vibrations from going from the motor as much as that would with the stiffer propeller but this propeller here is basically the same as that one except it's made from carbon nylon or carbon reinforced nylon or something like that uh, I think Banggood listing usually refers to it as carbon nylon, and it's a bit hard to demonstrate in the video, but it's um, you know it's a lot stiffer, and I have never had one of these break just from simply flying. They will break from crashing, of course, but these plastic ones broke just from simply flying around, so that wasn't very good. Um, and if you want to go even stiffer, you can use an actual carbon fiber prop. Now this is, of course, really quite stiff, but um, I got one set of these to try them and I've never tried them again because they are a little bit of a hassle. They're very, very hard here. So you have to have a nice lock nut to make sure that you um, get a good, uh, good, a good tightening on the nut so that it's not going to come off because they tended to make their nuts come loose fairly easily uh, before I was using lock nuts, it is. And the other issue with these is that they don't give such a good um, flight. They tend to transmit more vibration down the arm of the quadcopter and back to the flight controller and upset things and they don't sort of give you this cushioning effect that the softer propellers do uh, and another problem with these is that if you crash and let's say you crash down like this and the propeller sticks into the dirt and the quad goes over like that the pl this blade itself is probably not going to break which is good for the blade but what it can do is bend the shaft on your motor and generally motors will be more of a costly item than propellers so what we would rather have happen is that the propeller breaks um, so for larger quadcopters we're kind of not talking about mini quads anymore sorry but <laughs> uh, for this sort of a larger quad situation I would highly recommend these because they're a very good middle ground and they have all of the good features of well most of the good features of a stiffer propeller without having too many of the features of a softer propeller like this one in fact, I would recommend that you just stay away from these carbon fiber props altogether. Um, I know they look cool, like that's why I actually got these. I thought that they just look really cool, so I wanted to have some. But in actual fact, they are not very useful for this size of, definitely not for mini quad, you don't need them. Uh, the only time I would think that you really need to have really, really nice stiff props like this is when you're building a huge quad or a big hexacopter that has like you know like 17 inch propellers like this spinning around and you're supporting lots and lots of weight um, then maybe the carbon fiber props would make sense
another issue that you can get with these larger props that we probably don't really need to consider in this video series, but I'll just mention it since I'm talking about it, is that they, because they weigh more, uh, they can be harder to balance. So a slight difference in the weight of one side to the other will cause more of a vibration that can be visible in your camera and so on. Uh, and you may have seen something like this where you put the propeller on that piece there and then you can get it to balance and um, make sure that each side weighs the same. Don't bother with any of that balancing stuff for these mini quad 5 and 6 inch props. You're probably going to break them pretty quickly anyway and they come balanced well enough in my experience and um, yeah just, just don't bother. Just take them out of the box and start using them. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to say. I would recommend just getting a bunch of 5 inch props and just trying them out and seeing which ones you like. Oh, one important thing. Um, which way do you put them on is a question that I actually found myself wondering when I first came to do this, so I should probably mention that. And the typical advice you hear is that the numbers should be up. Uh, and on every single propeller I've seen to date, the numbering is on the upper side of the propeller that is so that numbers will be in the direction that the motor will be moving so the, the air will be going down. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent foolproof way to think of it but if you want to look at it a bit more objectively um, notice that the blade of the propeller has a slight curve to it and if I can just focus on the end oh it looks kind of straight on this one actually but there is a very small curve, so it sort of curves, in this case it curves down like that. And you want that curving down to be the way that the air is going to go. So it's sort of a curve down like that. So this propeller should be spinning that way, around like this. So once you've got your props on, or once you know that the curved side is down, to check that you've gotten them on the right place, uh, remember that these motors are going to be spinning that way and the easy way to remember that is that the blades are going to be going in at the front and then also in at in towards or in from the back so the two back motors are going to be like this and the two front motors are going to be like this and then just check that the leading edge or the front edge of the blade as it comes around is going to be high so you want high here low on that edge and on this one you want high at the front and then low on that edge uh, so that's how I usually check just before I take off to make sure I've put my props on correctly well I was going to end the video there but I realized that from a newbie's perspective the next obvious question is what kind of propellers should you use with which kind of motors and I tried to make a table to sort of group all of this uh, relevant data together but it's there's, there's so many things that play a part. You have to consider all of those things that we just looked at about the propellers, the length, the style, whether they're bullnose or not, the pitch, uh, and then the motor size that you're using, the KV of the motor, the number of cells and the battery that you're going to use, the weight of the quadcopter that you're going to fly, and then also how, what kind of aggressiveness you're going to be flying with. Are you just going to be hovering or are you going to be doing lots of cool tricks and punching the throttle quite a lot? And all of those things do play a part in what kind of a mix of propeller and motor that you would use. So I actually gave up on trying to make a generic explanation and I'm just going to go with this very very limited set of examples that I would consider to be safe. So I've limited, limited it to the case that we're going to be looking at in this build series which is a 3 to 4S battery and using a 2300 kV motor or so, you know, round about that kind of range in all of these cases. And I've list, listed up some motor sizes going from smallest to largest. And typically I don't think we'd be seeing 1804s anymore. I do actually have some. Um, but usually we're going to be looking at 1806s or 22 size motors for this kind of mini quad. And then over here I've listed propellers in order of lowest load. Uh, so that's the easiest for the motor to spin at the top to the heaviest load at the bottom. Um, just within the range of propellers that this this class of motor can handle reasonably. Um, so what I've put here is this propeller. This is probably the heaviest load propeller that I would use with that motor. Uh, so for example, 1806 could handle 5030 as well, but I would say I wouldn't really want to go too much more than 
about a 5045 two blade propeller um, and that this is for aggressive sort of flying like really punching it really hard quite often uh, for example that one of the quadcopters that I showed in the first video in the series which is just hovering around I am actually using for that one I am using 6045 bullnose propellers so they're pretty heavy load propellers and I'm actually only using a 2205 motor for that but the reason I can get away with that is because I'm not punching it very hard it just hovers around now don't feel like this is any kind of a strict rule or anything so if you have some props that you think might be a little bit too large or too heavy load for the motors that you're using give it a try anyway and you can either just not fly too aggressively or perhaps just fly aggressively a little bit and then land and check the temperature of the motors because if they're getting overloaded they will get hot and they should be comfortable to touch to hold into your hold in your hand warm is okay but you don't want them to get hot and if they are getting too hot then you'll either have to use a lower pitch or a smaller diameter or less blades or a bigger motor or a smaller battery as in so if you're using 4S and they're getting hot you might find that on 3S they don't get hot so like I was saying there's a lot of factors involved here and it's quite hard to sort of narrow it down to any sort of a generic rule um, so I'm afraid this is probably the best I can do for now um, you might want to look in the comments below the video and see if other people have located some good tables or charts or something that you can use to get a better idea of what propellers you might want to use um, but I would say you'll be safe with 5030 on any 5 inch um, quad set of motors even little ones like 1804s um, so yeah that's <laughs> I think I'll just leave it there and uh, ask me some questions about this in the comments if you have a specific case maybe I'll have a comment uh, or an opinion on that but anyway for now thanks for watching